Whoa. Hello, everybody. This is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. Um, <laughs> hell, are, are you comfortable there, chicken? And he's standing on the flower pot. Oh, that's weird. Hi, everybody. Um, welcome. I haven't been on the server. Whoa, Eric left the game. Uh, I've been on the server in a little bit. Uh, oh, okay, he's back. Might be having connection issues. I, um... And going to. I was just going to work on some. Some uh, maintenance stuff. Uh, mostly. Oh, look, stone. Oh, I have iron. I have lots of iron. Ah. Light gray shulker box, block of iron. Let's, uh, let's take care of this. So, <clears throat> I didn't have... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Coughing in your ear. It's quite rude. Um, yeah, I didn't have, uh, I didn't have big plans. But, what always ends up happening is I come on here, I don't have super big plans, and then I end up recording for like two hours and have to figure out how to get an episode out of it. Uh, wood is over here. I need to rethink my entire <sighs> storage system. Okay, let's go into the nether. Luckily, I have a portal right here. So, we saw Eric Hulk's uh, wonderful underwater base. And it is just growing like gangbusters. And he, he sort of specked out where the portal's going to go. And let me uh, not do that. Oh, yeah. I love this picture. That's my dog, Clancy. She uh, she doesn't pose much for pictures, and so when I get her looking at the camera, it's kind of special. And then this is the, the macro adapter on the camera. It just turned out beautiful. Anyway, um, where am I going? I'm going to go up this way. So we have to dig a little... I think I have to look up the coordinates, but I think it's somewhere like off of here Because it's just to the st oh, I need to replace that sign. It's just to the south of spawn island Just to the north of spawn island magma cube Sorry, I'm a little bit distractible today So we'll dig down this way. I think Yeah, I think so. Let me look up the coordinates and figure out how far I have to go. It's not very far Oh, oh, that feels nice. Uh, sorry for the air conditioning noise. Um, it got hot again today. Actually, the last couple days have been quite, quite warm in, quite hot in, in Los Angeles. It's, it's late July and it's finally getting hot, which is a little bit crazy, but you know, hey, that's okay by me. We've had a couple hot stretches, but it, it, we haven't had like, a really hot weather a really hot summer so <clears throat> but as I said that's fine with me I don't like the heat very much oops put that down and then go like that okay let me go look something up I will be right back with you so you can almost see Eric Hulk's place from spawn island so it's just down here it's gonna be a short little tunnel super convenient uh, we are Definitely far enough away from here to put in a portal. So that goes here. Uh, this is where the portal's going to go. Plop, plop, plop. Um, a few blocks off to one side, but it was, it was too, uh, it was too, uh, too neat, uh, to put it like two blocks over that way. So this will work just fine. So the portal goes here, the portal frame goes here, so I need I need to dig out two more here. So, <clears throat> um, I haven't, uh, and, and yes, it was kind of a spoiler showing 
showing the base because it's not done yet and I apologize for um, stumbling into it and showing it off before it's ready uh, but we will uh, it, it's coming along it's super cool so I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna build the portal I'm gonna light it on this side and then uh, he can choose to light it when he's ready on his side I think that will be uh, I think that will be a fair way of dealing with it <clears throat> um, hello do that so um, how's it going it is almost my birthday uh, today is Friday the 26th of July and my birthday is on the 28th um, that's when I'm recording this you will you will not be able to see it until Monday the third the 29th so uh, this will be a little bit I don't know, it's confusing, but that's the way. To, oh, hello, Mr. Oh, you're going to ruin all my torches. Darn it. Darn it. Okay. Um, working in the nether is kind of a pain, isn't it? Let's see if we can plug this thing up. Does that take care of it? Yes, it does. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Let's put F3 back on. Uh, minus. There we go. That is where it needs to go. So anyway, uh, I will, I'll edit this and put it up on Monday. Um, so it'll be after the fact but uh, today is Friday and I have it's my birthday weekend so that's uh, that's exciting I guess um, don't have super huge plans I do have plans um, my hopes and dreams were to be able to celebrate at the Magic Castle as a member uh, unfortunately the the uh, I have to go through an orientation and the first orientation available is on Wednesday the the 31st yeah Wednesday ha <sighs> so um, I cannot exercise my uh, membership membership uh, not 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 responsibilities what's the word I'm looking for uh, benefits until I do the orientation, which is unfortunate, but I guess that's the way it is. If I put that there, I can still open that. Okay, that's convenient. Great, now let's put down the crafting table. Plop. And then let's get, um, let's get an empty shulker box. And look, I cleared out shulker boxes out of my inventory because uh, I had lots of junk in there and they just needed to be cleared up. So let's put another rack up there. And let's get out some of these and make myself some stone bricks. So, um, so yeah, on Wednesday I get to go to the castle for the first time as a member. And I have to sit through the orientation. And it's not, you know, it's not like showing up the first day at work and HR, you know, makes you watch videos. Although apparently there is a video involved. Um, no, it's they, they, there's like a little reception for new members, and I don't know how many people will be there. It'll be potentially the the uh, potentially some of the people who were at uh, the same audition date that I was, uh, but they've been doing a couple auditions a month, audition uh, d audition dates a month uh, because. They have a backlog of people um, and because they have been quite a bit stricter on admission uh, on the criteria for becoming a member so they uh, they have a bit of a backlog of people having to audition two three four or so times uh, I had to audition three times and apparently that's not terribly uncommon which you know okay fine that's the way it is that's the way it is so um, 
and the two people that I was auditioning with, I think, both auditioned twice before as well. So I don't know. So we will see. Um, and I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There were three people auditioning uh, along on the same day that I did. Uh, one was Chris, who is kind of befriended through this whole process. And he, I know he did not, he did not get uh, offered, extended a membership offer. I don't know quite what the right term for it is. Um, <clears throat> so he, they, he, but he did not pass the audition and we'll have to audition again. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I think he will. I, I think he plans to. Um, and I, I hope he does. Cause I do, I do think he'll be, I think he's a better magician than I am. So, uh, I, it's kind of a, it would be kind of a shame if he got frustrated and gave up, but it's not like this is like his main, um, goal in life, if you will. So anyway, um, so, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's on top for next week. And then after that, I will be able to just go to the castle as a member and just walk right in, which is kind of exciting. Uh, they do sometimes fill up. So, uh, sometimes even members are not, you know, are turned away, um, just because they get a little busy some days kind of depends who's, who's performing that week. Uh, but <clears throat> that is, but that is the plan. So, and then I, I have, I have some people who have been supportive and in some ways, you know, in some way related to my whole quest to become a magic castle member. And, um, I will I have another rack here. Um, <clears throat> And I want to host them. Huh. Looked like I was on fire, didn't it? Okay. Interesting. Uh, so I want, I want to sort of have belated birthday celebrations at the castle with some friends. And I guess there's a, there's a limit to how many people I can take at a time. So, um, or there, I can bring more, uh, um, I don't know, I, I could, I can bring larger groups if I want, but I have to make sort of arrangements for it. And, um, and I could see that becoming a little bit of a pain and people have to then pay uh, the door charge. Like if, uh, if the, the party size exceeds a certain, a certain number. Um, so, uh, hoping to avoid that. So that is, that is the plan. Um, so, but I have to get through the orientation first and, um, and then I get to find out, I get to see who's coming up in the future beyond, uh, the next, beyond the current week. And there are people playing in the current week, um, that I would like to see actually, uh, I would really like to see, and I contemplated getting guest passes <laughs> or getting a guest pass, um, to go this weekend, but I would just, it kind of just, it just kind of chafed me a little bit. The notion of having to, uh, having to get a guest pass and go as a guest when I had actually been, I had passed my audition and was in fact a member. But that's just me. Um, so, and um, and the the people that are playing that I would like to see this week, one of them is uh, Jonathan Levitt, who is a castle member and a he's a pretty he's a pretty well known magician locally at least. Um, I don't know that he's appeared on you know sort of on the national sort of stage, but. Um, he's, 
he has been uh uh and he was kind of one of my contacts to sort of help me a little bit when after the first audition and uh help me coach me a little bit he's very been very uh helpful and supportive uh helping me a little bit with uh how to update and change the audition and so that was that was very cool he is performing this week which i would like to see him i've not seen him perform like an actual show um <clears throat> so yeah uh but you know that's fine and then the other person is a magician named aussie wind who uh i actually got to meet this week he has a book called um repertoire yeah i think that's what it's called um surprised there aren't more magic books named to that but uh and it contains a bunch of the a bunch of the the tricks that he does and he was doing a signing at uh the magic apple which is the magic shop uh where i hang out go to sometimes and uh and he was doing a book signing and they don't do a ton of book sightings there, but they do them occasionally. And this was really cool because really what happened was a handful of people showed up and Aussie was there and he had the book and he was, he was selling the book. Uh, he had copies, <clears throat> you know, that he had brought and was selling and signing them. And, uh, it's a really nice book. It's, it's leather bound which is a little unusual for magic books but um and the the illustrations are all painted he's a painter and he painted the illustrations and they look gorgeous and they're really they're really well done so they're actually informative um that's one of the things about magic books is that you know the I believe I've talked in the past about the expert at the card table, which is kind of seminal, seminal magic book, very historically important um, for a variety of reasons, including the fact that it has like copious illustrations that are uh, that sort of show what the what the book is talking about, and it kind of set the tone for here's the way magic books are going to work in the future. Uh, so that's uh, so it's a, it's a very important book from that perspective. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of good stuff in the book too, but it's uh, my opinion. It's not written particularly well, <laughs> and the way it describes the different slights, although they're you know kind of the foundation for much of current close-up card magic. Um, it um, <clears throat> it's not it's not a particularly good place for people to uh, start with. So um, yeah, so so that was cool. Got to got to hang out and see him perform some really spectacular magic, and he showed a few things like, oh, here's how you do that, which was kind of awesome. Um, and plop, plop. so, uh, so that, that was really cool. It was funny because he was, um, somebody, somebody there, one of the other people there knew that I had, that I had a successful audition. So they congratulated me and he was like, Oh, you got in, you should come this week. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> and he was. Seemed a little confused by that particular scenario, but neither here nor there. So, um, so that was cool. That was one book signing. So I got his book and it's signed and I can't wait to spend a little time digging through the book because there is truly some fantastic material in it. Um, <clears throat> but I think it's, it's one of those things that's going to take a little bit of I'm going to have to spend some time with it. Like it's, uh, it's his, his stuff isn't easy. They're, they're definitely pretty advanced card tricks, which is great, but that's, uh, 
it just means taking a little bit more time and practice with it. But now that I'm past the audition, I was sort of neglecting other magic videos and books in my collection because I have uh, I had the sort of the looming specter of the audition that I just had to focus on things I was going to use for the audition. Uh, and now I'm past that, so I can actually start to study things that are outside of uh, what I was able would be able to accomplish for the audition itself. But anyway, so uh, and then so that was on that was on Wednesday. Oh, let's see here. Hang on a second. I think I'm spacing out the sea lanterns in the ceiling by fives, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, five. Okay, so from here. I can go <clears throat> into the hallway. So this one's the first of the hallway. Two, three, four. Now let's get some sea lanterns. I have a whole box here of lighting stuff. Um, stick it there. Get out one of these stack. I restocked all my sort of working shulker boxes. Plop. Okay. So that was good. One, two, three, four. Uh, yeah, so Aussie Wind was on Wednesday, and I'm glad I went to that. I, I wasn't entirely decided on it at first, but I decided, ah, sure, why not? Don't have Oops. <clears throat> Don't always have opportunities to hang out like that. Um, and then uh, and then on Thursday, one, two, three, four. Uh, then there was another book signing with uh, Rob Zabrecki. Rob Zabrecki is. Um, it's funny because I keep saying his name to people like I expect they're going to know who he is yeah, because he's always been kind of a, a pop culture figure in my frame of reference and not everyone that's not in everyone else's it seems but um, he is has been for 20 years has been a professional magician uh, but before he did magic, he he was in uh, he was in a band. He was in a band called Possum Dixon, who I guess not quite as uh, as well known as well. He uses a lot of stone bricks. Um, <clears throat> not quite as well known as. I figured he was. They were kind of a. They were certainly big in the L.A. area. Um, <clears throat> and Rob himself is from Burbank. That's where, where he grew up in Burbank. Um, but there we go. Let's slab this. Anyway, um, and he's had a pretty crazy life, living the sort of the the rock and roll dream a little bit drugs and alcohol and just doing some inadvisable things and somehow surviving all that and uh, there's some pretty crazy stories in the book the book is called strange cures I have not read it yet um, but I had a, I had a copy of the book it's not available on the Kindle yet um, but so I brought my copy of the of the book to have Rob sign it. Uh, I had met him. I think I may have mentioned that on one of these videos. I met him a few weeks ago, several weeks ago. Uh, he is a friend of friends and and they were going to see him perform at the Magic Castle uh, and they were on his guest list. And so they're like, hey, Theron, want to come see Rob perform? I'm like, yeah, sure. Uh, and so <clears throat> um, so that was, uh, so I got to hang out with him there. And then, um, after he was done with his, uh, performance in the, the parlor, 
uh, he came out and, and, and hung out with his friends and chatted with me and he had been told that I was sort of he had been told about my quest to join and so he was he was very he was very encouraging and supportive and and was talking about some uh, another magician that he was sort of coaching a little bit on their audition and that person had to try out four times had to audition four times so um and this is somebody who's getting uh coaching from uh Rob Zabrecki, who performs magic just as Zabrecki, uh, but he's a he's a well-known and well-regarded magician, certainly within the castle. Um, he's a he's kind of a big deal. So, oops. Oh, what happened? Oh, we got a little leg spike because Barb joined. Howdy. Um, bloop bloop bloop. And then we can. Oh. No, not that. I guess that doesn't really hurt, but... Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> anyway. Um, so, yeah, that that was cool. And then... So, yeah, I showed up to the... Two and then the wall. Okay. Uh, so, he recognized me from... Our visit to the castle which was nice and uh, so and he congratulated me on getting in which is kind of cool but again somebody there somebody uh, at the at the book signing was following me on Instagram and saw my post there and he congratulated me and then Rob was like oh you got in I'm like yep yeah. and so he, he stood up and he said congratulations stood up and shook my hand it's very very nice um it's pretty uh it's pretty exciting um and then we just again it was just a group of people sitting around with the author of the book and he he didn't do any magic but we just talked and most of the people who were there were magic castle members and some of them had been members for quite a long time <clears throat> and uh, so we got a lot of stories of back, you know, back in the old days. And for them, the old days is, you know, like the late, uh, like the late 90s. Um, whereas other stories I've heard from the old days are from back in the 70s. But still very cool nonetheless. And that's the wall there. I will dig out that quartz. You can never have enough quartz. So, um, yeah, so uh, Rob's book, I've heard enough story. I've heard him interviewed on, um, I, I have friends who have a radio show at the Loyola Marymount University College Station called the Molotov Cocktail Hour, and they had him on as a guest. And they're the ones that I know, you know, they're the, they're the friend, they're friends of his and they're, they're how I met him uh, at the castle. Um, <clears throat> but they had, they interviewed him on their show and I heard most of it. I didn't, I didn't get to hear all of it. The show has, um, I don't get great reception for that station, um, everywhere. So. I was able to listen to it on my way home from Crash Space. Uh, they do their show Tuesdays nights, and uh, and it was just it was just fascinating him telling some of the stories from the book, and uh, and it sounds like a great like I'm I'm looking forward to reading it. I just haven't I just haven't done it yet, um, and the publishers were there, and the saw particles or did I I don't know okay so let's get this quartz uh, anyway so if you're interested in sort of a, a book that talks a lot about uh, the particularly the music scene in Los Angeles in the 80s and 90s uh, growing up in in Southern California and the music scene in the 90s um, by somebody who lived it, 
that's uh, it, 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 he's a great storyteller and everyone's saying the book reads great so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to to reading it I have a couple vacations coming up uh, this year and I will probably read it while on vacation so I'm looking forward to that but I'm hoping to read it on the Kindle and apparently um, there is Kindle version coming they just haven't uh, they haven't finished it up yet so I'm hoping to be able to uh, take advantage of that when it does come out 